Hi guys, welcome to Go Lang Tutorial Part 2. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. And today we're going to be making a web crawler in Go. We're going to be using Visual Studio Code for this. And the reason why is because Visual Studio Code has a really nice plugin called Go Documents. It allows us to look at the documentation of each of the uh, functions that we're bringing into our code. So it'll make us a little bit easier to understand. Even so, if you're just programming in Go, I'd recommend IntelliJ if you want a full-fledged IDE. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to make our package main, and we're going to create our imports. The first one, of course, is going to be FMT. Then we need net HTTP because we need to grab the actual HTTP that we want to parse. We need the operating system package because we need to deal with the operating system. We need the x.nate HTML package which is going to let us better parse our HTML. And we need the HTML atom package because we are going to break our HTML down into atoms. We need the strings pass package because we're going to be dealing with strings. We're going to bring in this limlib log level package and this is going to help us build a log deal with some of the errors in, in our code. So what exactly does a crawler do? A crawler will pull up the HTML itself and then it will allow us to identify certain parts of the HTML and then actually literally return them into the console. So in this case we want to be able to pull all the links in our HTML body and we want to be able to display them to the console. So you could actually modify this code if you wanted to and have it output to a file but in our case we're just going to have it output to a a console. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a struct for our links. Now a struct in Go is sort of like a record mixed with a type alias in Elm. We're defining a custom type here in Go. So basically our link struct is giving us little elements so the link will have a URL of string, it will have a text of string, and it will have a depth of int. Now we want to deal with HTTP errors and inside this HTTP error struct we're going to have an original which is just a string. So the first function that we need to make is to read our links. So it's appropriately named link reader. So we're going to take in the response and that will be a pointer of HTTP response. At least that's the type. We're going to take in the depth as well. And then we're going to output a slice of links. We need a few variables here. So here we're creating what's called a tokenizer. The tokenizer is going to allow us to parse the HTML uh, and create what are called HTML tokens. And we're passing our response body into it, so basically the body of HTML. And then we're creating a links here, which is going to point to our link slice. In this point it's just empty. And of course because we're going to have a tokenizer here we need to have a token and we're going to have another variable that points to a string. So we're going to build all of this in a for loop. We're going to use the anonymous character here to make our pages move forward. Then we're going to assign each page to its own token. So as we're going through each page we're actually building uh, a specific token and then we're going to sift through that token and pull out the links. So first we need to deal with any kind of errors that we run across. So we can actually pull what's called token type. We can say, oh, is that equal to an HTML error token? And if it is, we can break out of this for loop and that will deal with our errors. Then we can say if our start, which is our HTML token, is not equal to nil and it's of type HTML text token. We'll print this to the screen. And we're using a function called sprint. And as you can see, it says here, sprint formats according to the format specifier and returns the resulting string. We're going to pass text and we're going to pass token dot data. So what this will do is it will print out the link that we're looking at. We're going to run another if here, and we're going to check to see if the Adam, or the data atom is equal to atom.a. We're going to run a switch statement here to check what type of token we're dealing with. Our first case will be the start tag token and then we're going to assign that token to our start variable and our next case is going to be of end tag token. Then we're going to see if start is nil and if it's nil we're going to print out a warning. It's basically going to say that we found the end of a link but there was no start 
for that link. We don't want to break out of the switch statement here, so we're just going to continue with this. So we're going to call a, another function that we're going to make called new link here. We're going to pass our start, or our pointer to our start rather. We're going to pass our text. You got to remember start is a token, text is a string, and depth is an int. And then we're going to check if the link is valid. And if the link is valid, we're going to append it onto our slice. Then we're going to print out that we found a link and the link is valid. And at the end of this, we're going to set start equal to nil and text is going to equal an empty string again. We're also going to send out a debug for links, a log debug for links, and then we're going to return links out of this function. Our next function is going to be our new link function. This is going to take in a tag of type html.token. It's going to take in text of string and depth of int and it's going to output a link. So now we're actually calling up to our struct here, and as you can see we're calling the link struct. And we're saying, okay, set the text equal to strings.trim space text. This is basically trimming uh, all the spaces out of the HTTP link here. So we're calling up to here, and we're assigning variables to our link struct. And then our depth is going to be equal to our depth. Then we're going to iterate through our tag attribute and we're going to find all of the hrefs in this tag attribute and then if they are hrefs we're going to assign them to link.url which again is calling up to our struct here since we have a url of type string so after this for loop we're just going to return our link now we're going to make a very simple function here this function is just going to take in self link. It's going to be called string. The reason we're doing this is we're basically going to use this to format our strings so that they look all pretty. And by our strings I mean our actual links that we're pulling out of the HTML. There are two options when you're writing a crawler or a scraper. You could use a regex or you could just use your own string modifier and that's what we're doing in here. Instead of using a regex we're just going to modify the way the strings look. Okay we're going to make another one. It's going to check to see if the link itself is valid. All right, and we're going to check if the self depth, if that's the max depth, then we return false. If it's empty, we're going to return false. If it contains the word JavaScript or if it's empty, we're just going to throw it out. Otherwise, we're just going to return true. And this is how we're going to deal with our error. We're just going to return the original self, so we're basically going to reset it. We're going to make a variable for our max depth, and now we're going to open up our main function to deal with the rest of this and actually run the code. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to set our priority string. So what this does is it sets the output priority to the name of the debug level. In this case we're going to set it equal to info. Now we're going to set the log prefix to crawler. So we're going to make a log debug here and we're going to pass the OS arguments here. This is basically what's going to allow us to call a piece of uh, HTTP from our console so we're going to actually write the name of our, um, in this case, main.go. So we're going to run main.go, and then we're going to say what website we want it to crawl. And then if we have no website in it, we're going to pass this back. It's just going to say that we're missing an argument, and you need to input it into there. So this recur downloader function is going to let us download the HTTP multiple times, and we actually have to write this function. So we're going to go back up here. And we're going to write our recur downloader. And let's actually organize this. So we're going to put this max depth up at the top. Here's our recur downloader function. So this function is just going to take our URL and then our depth. We're going to make another function called downloader here afterwards. So after we download everything, we're going to check and see if our error is nil. And if our error is nil, then we're going to pass, or is not nil rather, then we're going to pass that error into our log and then we're going to return everything and actually exit this function. So now we're going to call our link reader function. We're going to pass the page and the depth into it. Then we're going to iterate through our links variable. We're doing this so that we can actually print out what we're seeing. So we're going to print out all of our links this way. And then we're going to check and see if our depth is our depth plus one is less than our max depth, and if it is, then we're going to recur our downloader again. So this is recursive calling here. And we're going to call it again, and then we're going to increment depth by one. So now let's write our downloader function. 
Now this just takes the URL of string, but it outputs two things. It's going to output our response, which is just going to be a call to our HTTP response, and it's going to output an error type. And this is mainly just going to tell the user, okay, we're downloading such and such URL. Then we're going to get that URL. We're going to assign it to our response, and we're going to assign the errors to the error. As you can see, here's what it actually does. Get issues a get to the specified URL. If the response is one of the following redirects code, get follows the redirect up with a maximum of 10 redirects. So now we're going to check and see if our error is, is not empty. So if our error is not empty, or if it's not nil rather, we're going to actually print this out to the screen. We're going to say there's an error. Then we're going to return which quits this function. Now we're going to check the response status code. This is for dealing with more errors. And if we get an error, we're just going to send that back to the screen. We're going to send log debug error, and then we're going to return nothing. Finally, we're going to return nothing. Okay, guys, so we're finished with our crawler here. So now we can run it. So if we just type it without any arguments, it's just going to say missing URL argument. So let's type in a URL of, say, tensor programming. And I messed up by typing it wrong. And there we go. So it's fetching all of the links on our blog here. And as you can see, it's nice and formatted. It's telling us how many links we have. It's telling us where the links are. And it's actually structuring the links in such a nice way. Now our blog has a lot of links, as you can see. <laughs> it's just going to keep going because we are running it recursively. All right, I stopped it. So yeah, this is a very neat little scraper. If you run it on something simple, like say, golang.org, let's try that. So there we go, we called up golang.org, and this gives us all of the different links that we can, that we pulled off of the site. So now we're having a little issue with the HTTPS protocol, as you can see, unsupported protocol schemes here. But once we get past that, it starts to work decently well. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, we will be making at least two videos a week from now on. So yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe. And if you have a question, feel free to comment. And as always, have a good day.